you're under 18, don't be watching this. Click off. I should have said that in the beginning. Anywho. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Dawn here. And today I'm going to be doing a two-year hormone update with you guys. I can't even speak already, you guys. I'm going to be doing a two-year hormone update. I recently hit two years on hormones. Yay. It's been a long journey and I've enjoyed every single moment of it. Honestly, it's just, you know, a very taskful thing to do to transition when you know that that's who you genuinely are and like that's just who your innermost just like personality is and that is who your entire being, your soul, it's just everything opposite of the gender you were assigned at birth. You will do and climb every single mountain that it takes to get to that desired point in your life where you feel comfortable. I think that's what transitioning is about, honestly. I think that transitioning is a very, very beautiful thing, and I think that people judge us very harshly because they think that, you know, or men will probably think that we're, we're transitioning to try and fool them and sleep with them, and women are like, this is a new woman in my territory, so I'm going to hate on her or judge her and misgender her on purpose so that people can know, like, who she really is. Being transgender is very difficult. It can be very difficult for people, especially if you're more on the, I hate saying this, but if you're more on the non-passable side, you know, it's you get more hate. And it's, it's so unfortunate. You know, we're fighting to have equality in all realms of being transgender, non-binary, um, you know, genderqueer, all of that. I hope you guys know that. I use this platform to educate, and I really, really enjoy doing so. I'm transgender. Welcome to my channel. So ghetto. Done that just now welcome to my channel <laughs> and um yeah i'm trans i'm a transgender princess if you will honey i'm just kidding dramatic let's get right into it so let's first start off by the medication that i take i take a spironolactone tab it looks like this round little tab don't mind my nails i just painted them before the video they're horrible it's this little tab and that's meant to you know, block the testosterone in your body that is producing naturally. Puts a halt to that and you're just kind of producing nothing. So you're just kind of like a hormoneless vessel and it's just kind of weird. Usually younger people start off with just testosterone blockers. They want you to like be 18, I guess, to start estrogen. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. <laughs> And here's my replacement pill, estrogen. That is what is causing me to go through a second puberty. So both these pills together make me, made me into the woman that I am today. The dosage of spironolactone that I am on is 100 milligrams. Mine, it came in one pill form. Usually people have to take like four 25 milligrams or two 50 milligrams, but mine just for some reason comes in the whole 100 milligram. As for the estrogen, I take six milligrams of it a day. Now that is the highest dosage of estrogen that you can be on that your doctor can give you I started fairly high on estrogen I don't know why my doctor did this maybe because you know he checked my blood and he was like okay maybe you need this much estrogen to transition um, properly I don't know I never I never really asked questions because I was always in my mind like okay the doctor knows what he's doing so I'm not gonna question him I'm not gonna really do any of that I started off on four milligrams um, I don't suggest you guys do this because it's very dangerous to start that high everyone starts at a different dose because of their body types, genetics, and hormone levels. For people trying to self-medicate themselves, you're the stupidest person on this planet. I'm really sorry to tell you I'm being straight up in this video. I'm cutting right to the point. You're very stupid, and I do not think you should be doing that. I do not tell you guys my dosages and what I take so you can go look on Amazon and buy some pills from Russia, Lord knows where, and, you know, self-medicate yourself. And then you wonder why, like, oh my God, you know, I want to kill myself because, like, my hormones are all over the place and I'm not being watched. It's very dangerous because it's not being supervised, and you can get blood clots, you can get cause damage to your kidneys and all that kind of stuff if you're not being watched by an endocrinologist so ladies please 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 I will not I will say this over and over again until you guys get it please 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 do not self-medicate you're dumb if you do it you know just get a doctor I know you have to wait 
longer than others sometimes if you live in other countries or states whatever but please do not self-medicate I know it's hard to wait so long because this is something you've always dreamt of happening and it's right there at your fingertips but be patient and get yourself a doctor I'm gonna get right into everyone's favorite part of the video like you know the physical changes of what the hormones have done for me so far like skin like I'm so beyond blessed to have soft skin because when without my hormones I was turning into a literal beast I never really grew facial hair or anything on my face so I never really got like the acne I never was really prone to getting cystic acne like a bunch of boys do when they're um, going through puberty I did have stubble on my chin and I had stubble on my upper lip but that's all we'll get into facial hair in a bit As for skin like you know my pores have definitely got a lot smaller um, I would say that my skin is a lot more dry normal to dry combination skin right now because before it was um dry oily and now it's normal kind of dry so like it's a mixture of the two and it it holds makeup really well on my face so I really like it but I do get like dry patches on my body sometimes so I'm thinking it has to either do with like a product that I'm using most likely with the estrogen because I did see online that that was one of the possible effects of taking estrogen. So my skin is very nice, very soft, but can get very dry if I do not moisturize it and take care of it the right way. If you're dry, get really oily based moisturizer so your skin can soak all that in and be glowy and beautiful. So for me, like I use um, oil based moisturizers and I love to lather myself in oil at night after I get out of the shower and stuff because I'm dry and it helps my skin stay looking fresh. Next um, change I would say is like, you know, muscle tone. So like pre-hormones, I used to work out a lot to compensate for not being able to transition because I didn't even know about transitioning at the time. So I was like, if I'm going to be gay, I'm going to be the best gay there is. So I worked out like 24-7. I was starting to get buff and all that. So um, I had bigger arms than most. I used to work out like 24-7 and um, you know I was doing that to compensate for not being able to transition. Now this is what my arms currently look like by for me just relaxing from the side and they look fairly good to me because they used to be like this big like where my hand stops and all the way to the back of my um, arm is that's how big my arms were. It was really muscular and I don't know if, you know, people say like being black, you know, your genetics make you naturally more buff and toned. But since I've been working out, my body has um, been doing really well and I've lost a lot of muscle mass and everything is just looking small, petite, the way that I want it, you know. I don't look like I'm going to go and punch a bitch every time I walk by anymore. I just look like a little, oh my God. <laughs> Hug me, I'm soft and petite. As for the midsection, I'll stand up so you guys can see. It is looking very, very, very curvy. Now, that for that being is because I've been waist training and exercising as well. Um, I really, really like the way my waist is looking snatched. For waist training, people think like, oh, you can just sit in your waist trainer and, you know, the, it will do the work for itself. However, that's not the case. You need to be working out. And I found that out the hard way. So that's why I'm here letting you guys know. Don't waste your time just sitting in a waist trainer. Actually exercise with it and drink lots of water um, because, you know, hormones will very much so dehydrate you because the spironolactone is a diuretic and it's going to make you pee a lot. So um, drink lots of water more than you had to prior to being on hormones because, um, yeah, it's very important that you stay hydrated so your body won't just um, collapse on itself. As for my butt... I can show you guys the side view. It's looking very nice and plump. That's also due to squats and everything. However, you guys can see, if you can look here, you can see that I have a nice little lump here and it's like over, it's falling over the thigh. Did not have that as much prior to taking hormones and I really like it. So now I'm going to turn to the back and here you guys can see like my hips and you guys can see like the form of like my butt. See this little thing here at the bottom, this little under booty here. This, this is amazing. Didn't have that before. That's real nice. Um, grateful to have that. 
and yeah, over all the hips, all the fat redistribution here. Now, I don't know if my hip bones have moved at all because I do, I did hear from a few people that before the age of 25, if you are on hormones, um, it's possible for your hips to kind of widen a little bit, but not too much, like the slightest bit. That's another thing that's like a that's like misconstrued in the trans community is that like people think like hormones will change your face structure and like your bone structure and everything but the hormones do change is the fat distribution in your body and it puts it in all the places that it makes it look and appear more feminine but as for like the bones changing that's not possible that's not possible only if you get surgery you have to have surgery to get your bones reshifted and shaved down and all that good stuff you have to get surgery um, it's not by hormones that's a myth um, I was probably one of those people that believed it could change your bones too in the beginning but being transgender for two years all my life but you know starting to transitioning for two years physically you learn a lot you learn a lot you know um, it's cool my sex drive um, is super fucking crazy it will go super fucking high and then it will plummage right into the fucking floor like a week after. I can want the most dick, like one dick, two dick, three dick. I just want all the dick. I just want it all, 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 dick, 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 dick. But then like the next week comes and I'm just like, I want everybody to get away from me. I don't want anyone to touch me. I'm not in the mood to have sex. Like, you know, it's just like, it's so weird. And I don't know if it's because of my dosage on the hormones. I don't know if it's because my hormone dosage is like the highest or whatever. But um, yeah, it the libido, just be prepared for that to be really crazy, ladies. You know, it all really depends on you as a person too and your personality and how you are sexually as an individual. However, for me, um, yeah, mine is wishy-washy it goes up and plummages right into the floor and um yeah it's just not it's not a good look but you know it's what i have to deal with whatever As for like more of the body like body hair so body hair is still there it does not completely go away for some i've heard for some it does completely like just vanish and like fucking lucky bitches i hate all of you whose hair just vanishes off of your body you have a special you have a special place in hell you really do it's nice and soft now it's like very subtle you know you can't even really see it like this is me being shaved after like one week you know it's like you can't even really see it because it's just like kind of like peach fuzzy it's not like really like thick and nasty like it was like pre-hormones for me the hair does the texture does change and the amount that it grows on your body does change now for my leg hair oh my god like pre-hormones it was like a fucking grillo pad it would cut a bitch if they tried to touch my leg like oh bitch i'm bleeding cut like that kind of thing you know prior to hormones i had to shave my legs every two days um it was really bad really annoying and it growing super thick however now it i cannot shave for like two weeks and my legs will still be really smooth hair will be on it but it won't be like you know thick ass fucking gorilla looking legs it's like nice and pretty and feminine and a princess you know <laughs> as for like the mental changes i i really 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 um so like a lot of trans girls don't like to talk about the mental changes in their transition and I think this is very educational for you all because you know knowing about this is important like in the beginning like you know I felt like I was going a little crazy because like all the hormones and like because I told you guys I did start on a high dose the doctor would tell me like you know if you're starting to feel like weird about like your hormones and your hormone balance you know you can just take one less one lesser of a dose and you can just go down in the dose but I was like no like I want these changes but I did learn it's not about how much estrogen you're on it's about how long you've been on estrogen so like the time span of being on estrogen not how much you're taking overdosing on it is really not going to do anything but hurt your body so please don't do that because you'd be a dumb bitch don't do that my doctor was telling me like yeah if your mood swings are getting crazy and you know you're starting to feel depressed you can just and stop taking it for a little bit and jump back onto it um but you know i stuck it out i was good it was just because you're going through a whole new puberty your body's changing you know the chemical balance in your body is completely changing so it's a lot on your body you're going through a whole new puberty being a little sad sometimes is most likely normal overall i feel amazing i feel so content with myself being transgender comes with like having like well for me at least i'm speaking on terms of me 
being transgender for me, it came with like anxiety and public. So I get anxiety in public because I think everyone knows my tea. I hate being stared at because I think everyone knows my tea. My friends would tell me like, oh no, people are staring at you because you're pretty. I'm like, well, I personally feel like people are staring at me because they know my fucking tea. They're clocking me, bitch. That's just like something that I have to get over. But lately I've been feeling really content with myself and I just feel like I'm not wearing as much in public anymore, like going up in public. Being two years on hormones has really brought me like a peace of mind because like, you know, I've been transitioning for this long and the hormones have really like started to really take a toll on my body in the most positive way, like as in like physical changes. And like, I just feel amazing. I'm, I've started to work out and I'm starting to see more of an hourglassy shape in my body and it's just helping me like be more possible so like I feel really content with all things going with my transition right now oh another thing as for boobies I did not wear a bra so that you guys can see what the titties look like the titties I wear like a light pink wash shirt so that you guys can see I'm not going to show you the full thing but I'm just going to give you like a a good little like you know wash so this is what my boobs look like after two years a nice little small b cup yeah like I can grab them like completely with my hands like it's it's crazy like you know they they still hurt to this day like a lot of trans girls say like oh like you know my my hormone levels um my ch changes peaked at six months and then like after that everything just kind of stopped like after like six months to a year but for me my my changes didn't really stop you know with my boob area they're still growing and they still hurt like all the time and the sensation in them is incredible like if you ever got your nipple sucked during like getting some dick girl like it's it's amazing like if you just suck on my nipples like i can like fucking just oh i'll live i'll see rainbows and i'll fucking cry to you i go crazy for it it's amazing if you're under 18 don't be watching this click off i should have said that in the beginning Anywho, show off for watching for this vlog. But um, yeah, my nipples, it's its amazing sensation. Didn't have that sensation pre-hormones, but that sensation now is incredible. I really feel like I'm having fun with you guys in this video. It's just fun to talk about myself. My real hair is about like here now. It's been growing for two years and I could wear it natural, but what I'm trying to do, because as for being a black girl, you know, it, people have the stereotype like, oh, you know, black girls can't grow their hair. It's like, well, yeah, we can't put so much heat on our hair because then it gets dry and then it likes to fall out, but it's actually still growing. So like it'll just break off at the end, but it will still constantly be growing from the root. What I've been doing is doing protective hairstyles, like wearing wigs or putting in a weave and stuff. And right now I'm just, I'm wearing a wig. So it's like, I don't want to like be constantly putting heat on my hair. So I'd rather like wear something where like, you know, I can just braid my hair underneath so that it grows and I'm um, taking my vitamins and stuff and drinking a lot of water and just like, you know, one day I'll probably just wear my hair natural, like with like, you know, gel and like um, oils and stuff to make it like in its natural form, but in like really curly kinky. So yeah, I just want to have my hair stay really natural and have it grow because I don't want to be one of those chicken headed black bitches. No, thank you. Everything is going really well within my transition. I recently changed my name. September 1st is when I got it approved to change it. I have the two papers to take to the places where I need to go for the DMV and like getting my birth certificate changed and stuff like that. My surgeries are still in the process of um, being accepted by like my insurance because my surgeries are being covered by my insurance insurance i'm going to dr sinclair and beverly hills i'm sorry guys one second my feet are hurting he's going to be doing my procedures right now both of my reference letters are being sent into my insurance for them to look over it and see if they would want to cover my surgeries but most my um the person who takes care of like the paperwork for all the transgender care and health care um, he told me, yeah, it usually always goes through, so you have nothing to worry about. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty okay right now. I just can't wait to make my consultation. You guys will definitely be updated with that. I think I've covered everything that I can really think of. Overall, um, is it worth it to transition? Hell yes. I love it, even though it comes with the negative people talking crap about you. You lose friends. You know, people 
judge you and all this people think you're an abomination to this world but you know fuck them be still doing my giveaway until the 11th i will link that down in the description box below i'm very content with everything i will update you guys on the surgeries thank you guys so much for w watching and listening and thank you guys so much for supporting me i love you all so much because without you guys i would not be where i am today i really appreciate you all go ahead and like comment and subscribe and share this video with your friends and whoever may need this video because I think it's important to get this message out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later in my next video. Mwah!